Oh boy, here we go again, guys. Here we go again. The Ryan Johnson Star Wars trilogy up in the air. We don't know what's going on with it. Is it canceled? Is it toast? If there's a God in heaven, the answer to that would be yes. But uh, this is Hollywood we're talking about here. And let's be realistic. Let's be 100% realistic. Money talks. And $1.3 in the box office talks. A lot of people bought it on home video. Talks. Porg merchandise sold like crazy. Talks. I'm not saying that it's dead. I'm just saying that there's a lot of, if you know Hollywood at all, you know that it could still be alive. But anyway, Cosmic Book News has run this story. And this has been a rumor that's been circulating around for the last couple of days. I know Midnight Edge did a video about it yesterday. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, so I don't know what they had to say about it. But they're talking about the same thing here. Is Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy rumored to be dead? Now, this has come up before. It's come up in the last year. And a lot of people have been heavily speculating on it. More importantly, well, a lot of it based upon um, Bob Iger's comments as well as other factors. Well, let's take a look here. So the writer here says, last August, I was the first to offer that Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy had been canceled. And now, nine months later, a new rumor offers the same. The rumor doesn't come from the best source, but at least it backs up his claims that Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy is dead and done for and a good thing. And I completely agree. John Campia, who actually says uh, the report was erroneous, but then confirms it, offers a, a recently announced release dates for the new Star Wars untitled movies are for Game of Thrones showrunners D.B. Benioff and uh, sorry, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, uh, meaning not for Johnson's films, which is true. We do know December 2022, 2024 and 2026 are going to be the next confirmed release dates for Star Wars films right now. Let's be right now. Okay, those are those are the release dates for holidays. They they established their holiday release dates until 2027. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to put one out in, at another time of year. Marvel also locked in its particular release dates through 2022, so we know Phase Four, uh, but even those have changed. If you recall, Phase Three had certain movies that did come out and other movies that didn't, and then there were additions. It's all it, it, look, it, it's all up in the air regardless. However, Campia says that according to his sources, that Disney doesn't have anything on the schedule for Ryan Johnson and that this and that this is basically done. And Campia go as far as to claim that Johnson could consult with David Benioff and D.B. Weiss's trilogy, um, which is possible. Again, it could all be working together. There is going to be a summit. That summit is taking place, I believe, next week. Uh, where they're going to have, DB, you know, the Game of Thrones guys and Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy in the Star Wars story group all at a all together for a couple days talking about where they want the Star Wars franchise to go. Um, and a lot of people are going to be heavily criticizing that because they, for some reason, have jumped on the anti Game of Thrones bandwagon at this point. Look. The, the show is doing just fine. I think it's doing pretty damn good this season. Um, and uh, and I really like it. So anyway. Now, is the is Johnson's Star Wars trilogy canceled? Whether or not Campy actually got the info from sources or is simply making an educated guess and claiming it as a scoop is unknown. Anything could be real here, but it does say, and this is true, Disney CEO Bob Iger has been, has been talking up Benioff and Weiss Star Wars movies with no mention of Ryan Johnson. You have to understand that coming out of Bob Iger, there's been no mention of Ryan Johnson. Not one. Not one mention of his movies. I mean, it was officially announced in like December of 2017 when that the that Johnson would be getting a trilogy. It was officially announced then. Kathleen Kennedy has mentioned it on two or three occasions, right? But I think even that's just lip service to fight back against the fandom menace. If I'm being honest, I really do believe that's the case. Uh, to keep certain people happy and other people unhappy, but still being very vague on the details. And Ryan Johnson, I think, knows that his shit's over with, but he doesn't want the trolls to win. He supports Anita Sarkeesian. That's all I'm going to say about that one. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but there's uh, but he goes on to say here that there's no evidence to suggest, uh, but there oh sorry, but there is evidence to suggest that Disney has canned Ryan Johnson and Axis Star Wars trilogy. So uh, let's take a look here at the potential evidence, right? So first there's the hatred for Star Wars, The Last Jedi, which is true. Uh, it says first, there's a fact that a lot of people simply hate The Last Jedi and Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy's approach to the franchise. Sure, while well, The Last Jedi made over a billion, it made exceptionally less than The Force Awakens, which was another so-so movie under Kennedy. It's also the main reason why Solo failed, which had nothing to do with Solo being released so close to The Last Jedi. The same argument doesn't hold true for Marvel. But then again, if Marvel movies had one that was so uh, divisive, 
and not universally loved to some extent, then would the next movie fall short? I mean, Captain Marvel was kind of pretty universally divisive. Uh, people saw it. They thought that they thought that it was OK. It still grossed over a billion dollars. But I do believe that the slingshot effect has a lot to do with with Captain Marvel's success and the fact that it's still the opening weekend of Endgame with its three hundred and fifty seven million dollar opening weekend here in the States. Uh, Captain Marvel was number two with eight point two five million. So people went back to go see it again. The slingshot effect is legitimately real. So I, we don't have any kind of actual case study to pull from. Marvel has a long established track record now. 22 films over 11 years and we know what's coming down the pipeline we know what storylines are going to tell us and there's a basis surround you know brought up by the the history of the comics star wars doesn't have that i do not believe that comparing star wars to marvel is a valid metric i don't believe so but they don't have that many overlapping aspects that can be used in the venn diagram approach to this so that being said solo was definitely hurt by the last jedi on top of coming out at a very bad weekend memorial day weekend has not been good for years. Deadpool 2 opened the week before to 80 some odd million dollars. I think 88 million dollars. Solo's opening weekend of 80 million was cut in short by Deadpool pulling in an additional 43 million that opened that second weekend. So there's timing, right? Like, like Endgame was two weeks ago. And then now we've got Detective Pikachu. So Detective Pikachu is supposed to make around 90 million this weekend, and that's going to give Endgame a run for its money. Also, Pikachu is good. Go see it. So so there's that. There's a lot of a lot of elements at play here. Not a lot of it it has to do with uh, Star Wars fan base being toxic or everything else. But it's true that people who supported The Last Jedi did not go out to go see Solo. The casual moviegoer did not go out to go see Solo, and that is a problem because Solo is a good movie that got kind of shat on because of The Last Jedi's failings. Anyway, um, so it says, uh, this has everything to do with people being extremely disappointed with The Last Jedi, and also the fact that Solo wasn't very good. Again, that's 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 uh, that's an opinion that I don't agree with, period. I felt Solo was very good. I've watched it multiple times on home video. I've gotten people who were adamantly against watching Solo to finally watch it on Netflix to come back and go, damn, that was actually a good movie. I, I'm upset I didn't see it in theaters. So it, it's it's... A movie that was bar marred by its own controversy, but still is a better sum of its parts than The Last Jedi. <laughs> anyway, it's a never good thing when audiences is a split uh, like Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. It's pretty simple. Like, even Batman. Look, Man of Steel came out in 2013, did OK. Batman v Superman was 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 neutered by Warner executives. But I could I could spend an hour going over how badly Warner's completely kneecapped Zack Snyder and, and completely destroyed that brand going forward. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Uh, now, it says here it's pretty simple to put out good movies and people will see them. Not always true. Uh, put out bad movies and people won't see them. Also, not always true. Twilight has grossed a lot of money. If you want to bring up a, a franchise that had a popularity, a uh, popular fan base. People argue that Avatar wasn't a good movie, $2.78 billion worldwide. So that argument ultimately holds very little weight. Um, but anyway, both The Last Jedi and Solo are bad Star Wars movies. Again, the latter, no. The first one, yes. So getting back to Ryan Johnson, you think that Disney and its investors aren't aware of the situation and fan reception regarding The Last Jedi? If so, I have a bridge to sell you. Mm, and they, No, they are. They, they definitely are. But the, they're also not walking away from the brand. We have to understand, too, is that the toys... And merchandise has also died off. People just aren't buying as much of it. That's another factor. I mean, go back and look at John Lasseter's Cars from 2006. Movie uh, was basically an absolute remake of Doc Hollywood. It was. It was a beat-by-beat -beat remake of Doc Hollywood using the old Chevron car design from commercials back in the 90s. It was pretty cool. But the reason why Cars got Cars 2 and Cars 3 was because Cars had a billion dollars in merchandise sales. And as a result of that, John Lasseter also greenlit the spinoff series Planes, which was terrible. Both those two movies were terrible, but there was a lot of merchandise sales at the time. That was a while ago, and people just aren't buying that as much. Once we start valuing merchandise in regards to apps and microtransactions from those type of games, which you know they're already working on, then we're going to be looking at this from a totally different perspective. There's a lot there that's going on, but he does talk about toy merchandises and sales of plummeted uh, because of Star Wars The Last Jedi. This is what he's saying here. Um, it was Force Awakens had a big problem with that, too. 
I, I, I have gone out and I have found toys from Force Awakens and Rogue One at my Toys R Us before it went down. So it's not just The Last Jedi. People were already waning off of it, too. Uh, what's rather funny is that in the sales drop also caused Disney to report their earnings differently as they now report their licensing and merchandising sales along with their park sales, which makes it look as if their consumer products line isn't losing money. No, it probably is. But it's again, it's, it's just also um, it's also a, 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 a different world. You got to understand we're in a different place than we were uh, in 2015, you know, with technology and toys. Ch the children today aren't growing up uh, wanting toys. They're, they're just not. You know what I mean? So it's like it's collectors buy the toys. The kids aren't buying the toys. So it becomes an issue. The kids are buying video games and they're doing a bunch of other stuff that's in the digital space, but not in the not in the toy space. And that's only going to continue. And trust me, Hasbro and Mattel are fully, fully aware of this. Uh, Mark Hamill questions The Last Jedi, which is true. He said uh, recently last March, uh, they had me walking by 3 P uh, 3PO, not even acknowledging him. I said, I can't do that. Uh, Ryan Johnson said, OK, go over and do whatever. So I went over and did whatever. They say it in the script. Forget the past. Kill it if you have to. And they're doing a pretty good job. Now, Mark Hamill has tried and I'm only bringing this up. Uh, Hamill has tried to walk back those comments, but it's pretty clear his thought process on, process on The Last Jedi echoes that of many people who dislike The Last Jedi. So um, we have that. Also, uh, you have your uh, Star Wars New Galaxies movies, Get the Axe, uh, saying here, a big chunk of evidence, at least for me, is that Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy has been canceled, uh, came before what well, Lucasfilm production designer Neil Lamont had to say about Star Wars movie Getting the Axe. His words match up with Disney's description of Johnson's Star Wars trilogy with mention of New Galaxies, saying here, we're just starting our work on another Star Wars spinoff, and yeah, we're actually making uh, our mark on Tatooine, which would have been interesting, and some other New Galaxies. So hopefully, if that comes back, we'll get the chance to go back further. Uh, and then even Johnson here said that his own trilogy was going to be new characters from corners of the galaxy that Star Wars lore has never explored, which I think to many people out there, if he didn't, if he just focused on that, he would be OK with that. If he just focused on that, he would be fine. It has everything to do with taking core characters and how he treated core legacy characters. Right. Like that is the general problem here. So if he were to take that and he were to work on something that's in his own little pocket of the galaxy, that's not touching on anything else, it might be perceived differently. But ultimately, I really get the feeling that uh, his 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 trilogy is is arguably dead. But for right now, now he keep in mind, keep in mind, and this is just me being a contrarian, uh, the likelihood of them announcing a new trilogy is going to be pretty high. Uh, because Disney is taking some time off. They're taking off three years before giving us a movie every two years because they don't want it to be considered something that is, you know, that's kind of a, an, a brand that outstayed its welcome. But ultimately, if they move, once they move away from the Skywalker saga and we're not dealing with those core characters anymore, they then have the opportunity to go and explore new areas. I mean, look at the success of, of Rebels. You know, four seasons of Rebels, yes, it dealt with some core characters uh, as time went on, but it still really established the core crew of the Ghost, and the story was all about Ezra and his journey to become a Jedi. Uh, you know, look at ah Ahsoka Tano from Clone Wars, a wholly new character that has become a massive fan favorite. They can do this, it just takes time to get there. And the thing is, is that they feel like they don't know what they're doing with what they were given. And ultimately they probably should have just never gone with a new trilogy. They should have just started with a whole new slate and, and gone from there instead of trying to bring back in everybody else. But, um, unfortunately the powers that be, especially at Disney that like franchises and like spinoffs and whatnot, they, uh, they, they, they kind of dropped the ball on this one. They really, really, really did. And Kathleen Kennedy doesn't ever run franchises. So she is not the kind of person who's really going to know specifically, I think how to handle it. And maybe with, uh, with D.B. Weiss and David Benioff, uh, things will be a little bit different. But I think that Ryan Johnson, for right now, they're just not going to be talking about him. He's still definitely involved. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy has said so multiple times. He's still definitely involved. And that's not really a good thing. But at the same time, the rumor also says that Bob Iger has kind of neutered Kathleen Kennedy in regards to her power over the Star Wars franchise. And that he is going to want to be overseeing it specifically which could be either good or bad. Um, I, I just, I don't know where they're going to go with it. At least the last, at least the rise of Skywalker looks good. So we got that and we have the Mandalorian coming out right before then and Jedi uh, Fallen Order coming out right around that same time. So there's a lot of good Star Wars that's still coming. 
And I think they're going to kind of reset the clock with the TV shows, which is kind of where they should take it. And I'm entirely okay with that. But anyway, I leave it to you, your thoughts, your opinions. Do you think the, his, uh, his, his series is canceled? Do you think they're just going to hold off until later on and kind of announce it after they give us what this new trilogy is and they just kind of slide it out there? Uh, do, or do you think they should kind of take even longer break from movies and focus more on TV? Want to hear your thoughts, your opinions? Let me know down in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day and peace out.